Pereshis boro Elohim, ed hashomayim with horas. Allow me to introduce you to a phenomenal website maintained by the Academy of the Hebrew Language in Israel. When Jews from around the world began migrating to the newly founded state of Israel, a professor at the Hebrew University named Shlomo Morag had the idea of recording how those Jews pronounced Hebrew and specifically Biblical Hebrew in the places they came from. The timing was critical because once immigrants, their children, and eventually grandchildren began speaking modern Hebrew in Israel, their traditional accents began to change and morph into modern Hebrew. The website of the Academy of the Hebrew Language has dozens if not hundreds of recordings of people from around the world and some of them were actually born in the 1800s. What I would like to do is to play for you a number of recordings and after each recording, I'll give you some insight into what makes that specific pronunciation tradition different. So I'm going to begin with number one, the Samaritans. The Samaritans are a group of people who are Israelite but not Judean, meaning they're Israelite but not Jews, and they have been living in or around Shechem at Mount Gerizim for more than 2,000 years. And if you're interested in the Torah of the Samaritans, check out a video I made about their Torah. We're going to hear a recording by Ovadia Tzedakah, who was born in Shechem, Nablus, in 1898. Now, when we listen to this recording, notice three things. First, there is no chet sound. There's no ch. Second, there's no v for a bet. It's only b. And then finally, I'll just throw everything else in here. All the vowels are different, so check out all these vowels being completely different. All right, here's Ovajit Stucka, born in 1898. <laughs> Reuben Bakr Israel, Ubani, Reuben Enoch, Mesfet Anuki, Elfilu, Mesfet Afilwi, Lesron, Mesfet Esruni, El Karmi, Mesfet El Karmi. Now, the one key word I want to focus on from this reading is what is pronounced in modern Hebrew is Mishpachat, family of Mishpachat. But in Ovadit Sdaka's reading, it's actually Mishfet. And that is because the chet has completely disappeared and all we are left with is an empty letter. So it's just mishfet instead of mishpachat. One last note, you might have noticed that the Samaritan pronunciation of the name of God, yud hey vav hey, is shema, which means the name. And that is different from the Jewish pronunciation, which is Adonai which means my Lord. The next tradition we have is Babylonian, or what we today call Iraq. In 1908, Shlomo Chanush was born in Baghdad, and he immigrated to Israel in 1951. This recording was made in 1970. Now there's a lot that's different here in Babylonian, but for now, the main thing I would like to introduce for you is that the Vav is pronounced as a wa instead of v. It's a w. And this is considered a very ancient form of Biblical Hebrew. And also notice that the letter tough, when it does not have a dot, when it doesn't have a dagesh, it is going to be pronounced as th. So here he is, Shlomo Chanush, born in 1908 in Baghdad. Bara Elohim, et hashamayim, et ha'ares. Now the key word I would like to focus on is in modern Hebrew pronounced the eight, but here in Babylonian in Iraq it is pronounced. Wa'ith. 
And that's for two reasons. First, that Vav is a Wa, Wa. And secondly, the Taf at the end does not have a Dagesh, it doesn't have a dot, and that gives it the soft Th. So, Wa Eth. And that's actually the Th in some English words, such as Sabbath. Th, Sabbath, instead of the modern Hebrew Shabbat. Next, we have Yemenite Hebrew, which happens to be the type of Hebrew that I get asked the most questions about. People are really interested in the Yemenite pronunciation of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. And there are two things you're going to want to look out for in this pronunciation. The first is we've just seen that the Vav is pronounced as a Wa. That's a hallmark of Yemenite. But also something very unique. And that is that there are six letters in Hebrew called the Beged Kefet letters. It's an acronym for the six letters. And these letters are supposed to have two different pronunciations. And the Yemenites, more than any other pronunciation, actually distinguish between these letters with dots and these letters without dots, between these letters with Dagesh and without a Dagesh. This recording is from Yosef Tzadok. The recording was made in 1970. And Yosef Tzadok was born in 1897 in the city of Sana or Tsana. And he died 103 years later in the year 2000. Yosef Tzadok, born in 1897. <laughs> وهو المراد برقي على شمايم لهوين على الهوراس وايخين ويا عسألهيم شني أمر ثجذليم أثمور الجغل ممشالة هيم وأثمور الجغل ممشالة هالليلة وإذك خوبيم The key word that I chose for you today is in modern Hebrew pronounced Hagidolim Hagidolim but in Yemenite Hebrew we actually have the gimel with a dagesh, with a dot, pronounced differently, and it's a j. We also have the dalid without a dagesh pronounced differently, it's a the. And what we end up with is not ha gidolim, but ha jidolim. If you enjoy studying Biblical Hebrew and can use some help getting you to where you want to be, you should consider taking a course with me at the Institute of Biblical Culture. Every few months a new course begins, this course lasts 10 months and covers anything and everything you'll need to know about introductory Biblical Hebrew. The next pronunciation is from the Jews of Italy. In 1987, Fernando Belgrado was recorded and Fernando was born in Florence. And what you should notice here is that the letter Ayin is voiced in a very special way. I think it's actually voiced in the nose if that's possible. And so it's a very unusual pronunciation compared to all the other pronunciations of ayin. The key word I would like you to take away from this reading is the name Naomi, which in modern Hebrew would be Naomi or Noami. But here it would be something like Naomi, Naomi. The next type of pronunciation is that of the Persian, which today is known as Iran. This recording comes from Rabbi Ezra David Kohen, who was born in 1884 in Yazd. He is by far the oldest person in this study. And quite possibly, his voice is the oldest voice I have ever heard in my life. This recording was made in 1956, and pay attention to the significant vowel changes 
And notice that the chet, the ch of modern Hebrew, is actually a ha, like a hey. And this is something, interestingly, that we saw in the Samaritan pronunciation as well. So the key word for me is going to be achicha in modern Hebrew, but achicha in Persian is going to be ayicha. Ayicha. The chet is gone, the chaf is not. So ayicha. The next recording I would like to play you is that of the Portuguese community in Amsterdam. And this type of Hebrew pronunciation is called Sfaradi. Sfarad means Spain in Hebrew. And so what it means is not specifically from Spain, but this is one of the many pronunciations that is in some way historically related to the Jews of the Iberian Peninsula. And in this example, they're in Amsterdam. And the reason why this is so important is because the pronunciation we're about to see here is almost identical to modern Hebrew pronunciation that is spoken today in Israel. For example, the tav is pronounced t, no matter whether or not it has a dagesh. Ta ta, so it's not ta or the, it's only ta. But this pronunciation isn't identical to modern Hebrew. For example, there is that nasal ayin, the ng, that we saw in the Italian pronunciation. And there's also something unique here, that the vet is considered a ba, no matter what. Whether or not it has a dagesh, it is a ba. So let's now listen to a recording of David Ricardo, who was born in Amsterdam in the year 1904, and he died in Israel in 1982. <laughs> אשר דיבר להם אביהם, ואי ברך אותם איש, אשר כברכתו ברך אותם, ואי צהף אותם, ואי אומר עליהם, אני נאסף אל נמי, כי ברו אותי אל אבותיי, אל המאנרה, אשר בשדה נפון החיתי. The word that I chose for you from this recording to focus on is, in modern Hebrew, kevir chato, kevir chato. And we see that the tav, even without a dagesh, is pronounced as t in modern Hebrew. However, the vet here, without a dagesh, is uniquely pronounced as a b. So even though in modern Hebrew it's kevir chato, here it is kebir chato. And now we come to the last group, which is the Ashkenazi pronunciations. Ashkenaz is a biblical term which is often identified as Germany. And even just like Sephardi wasn't specifically Spain, Ashkenazi isn't specifically German. It's large swaths of Europe and Russia and so on and so forth. It's a large pronunciation group. In 1906, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, David Regnishberg was born in Kovno, or today known as Kaunas, in Lithuania. In this reading, we'll see two hallmarks of Ashkenazi reading. The first is the major change to the letter Taf, all of a sudden being a Sa, if it doesn't have a Dagesh. And another thing is that the vowels start changing and even the stress begins to shift. So that the stress isn't at the end of the word, it starts being more towards the beginning. So let's take a listen to this recording. וכי הייתי בארץ מצרים שבע עשרה שנה. ויהי ימי ינקי שני חיו שבע שונים וארבעים ומאה שנה. ואני קראו לבני ישראל עמוס. ואני קרא לבני לבני ישראל להגן עלי. אם לא נוצר שיחים ואימךו שימיות חתר אשר איכי ועשיסו ימות חסד ואמס אל לא תגברני במצרים ושכבתי עם אבי סל, ושא סמי ממצרים, וכבר תמי בקבורוסו, ויאמר עונכי עשה כדבריך. And the key word for me here is going to be in modern Hebrew tachat, but here we actually see it as tachas. Tachas, because the sa 
is for that tough without a dagesh. And finally, to make this fun, I thought I would add my own pronunciation for the final example. And this is how I read in synagogue and in prayers at home, but when I actually read with my students, I pronounce it differently in modern Hebrew. Bereshis, bara Elohim, es hashamayim ve'es ha'aretz, ve'ha'aretz, ha'isa sohu vavohu ve'choshech al penei sehom, ve'ruach Elohim, Mirachefes alpine hamoyim, la yomer Elohim, yi or, vai he or. So these are the pronunciations I picked. First, I'd like to say I left some out, and you can go check them out for yourself. Specifically, Egyptian, Russian, Syrian. I've left a number out. Algerian. You can go and check those out yourself. Moving forward, what are we supposed to make of all of these pronunciations? What's going on? So I think there are two ideas you can walk away with, and they're not mutually exclusive. The first one is that there's a great diversity in pronunciation. That none of these two were exactly the same. Each one had unique features. If you take a look at the Encyclopedia Judaica, the old one, on Hebrew grammar, you'll actually see a mega chart which shows dozens and dozens and dozens of differences, including ones that we did not even touch. So that's the first takeaway. But secondly, there's a great unity to all of these also. Except for the Samaritan, which is very difficult for a Jewish Hebrew speaker to understand, uh, all of these Jewish pronunciation traditions can be understood by other people. People can still understand each other despite the different accents. And kind of like somebody speaking in English in Australia can understand somebody speaking in South Africa and in England and in Canada and in the United States. So these really are still one language, it's just different ways of pronouncing it. If you like this kind of study and would like to learn to read and pronounce and translate the Hebrew Bible on your own, you should definitely consider taking a course with me at the Institute of Biblical Culture.